This podcast is brought to you by Mapper Forward's new Patreon community, the Global Coffee Think Tank. Check the show notes or head to patreon.com forward slash Mapper Forward to find out how you can become a member today. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Map It Forward. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this is episode one of a new series with Sergi Kotrovsky. Sergi, welcome back to the podcast. It's always good to be on. Stoked to be here. I love conversations with you. We have been talking for an hour and then realized we should probably record the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the reason I love talking with you is because you are somebody who I think is a complicated complex thinker in our industry that considers a lot of uh, different perspectives. You have your own podcast in the industry. So before we get into the into our conversation, can you plug your podcast, please? Yeah. So I have a part. Well, first, I own Mirror Coffee Roasters. I'm one of the co-owners. And within just our coffee roasting company, we started a podcast that's just been kind of open to conversation. It's not I want to say it's not super intense, kind of low key, but people have been like super interested about understanding more about in general, like what does coffee look like? What is coffee? Like we cover pretty basic things such as, you know, coffee is a cherry. That's not really common understanding. So we kind of try to open things up like that, but then also sometimes we'll just get kind of philosophical and just talk about, you know, what does leadership look like? What does it mean to um, like practice, like rem- have correct and proper practices within a business. So stuff like that. So we go back and forth, but it, it's been super fun and I've enjoyed it. Like that's why, I mean, that's why I'm back here. I just love podcasts. I love yeah. talking to people. So, yeah. And, and the reason we're going to have a conversation over these next five episodes is because I feel that the role of the cafe manager is different today than it has historically been uh, for a a lot of different reasons. And you Mm -hmm. are a cafe manager, you and and a business owner. So you can approach cafe management from the perspective of understanding what it is like for Mm -hmm. things as an employee, as well as the owner of a business. So it puts you in a a very um, interesting position. And I want to explore the idea of cafe management in today's environment you're in the united states um which is undergoing a lot of interesting uh stuff let's call it um (laughs) i mean stuff feels like it's all encompassing for it yeah exactly (laughs) right um but but i i feel that the role of the cafe manager is going to accelerate in the way that it evolves as the stuff we were talking about Mm -hmm. starts to impact business owners and employees more and more over the next coming couple of years. You're somebody who I have a lot of respect for. I have a lot of respect for the values that you cover and the way that you treat people, the way you talk about the industry, the way that you have approached opening your own business. We've had a lot of conversations, you and I offline about different kinds Mm -hmm. of things. I think that you are the kind of cafe manager I would hope people would like to aspire to be like. And you're a very considered and thoughtful business owner as well as participant of the coffee industry and so when it came to talking to cafe managers about what that looks like now uh you're the the only human i wanted to talk to about it so thank you you're welcome um and so today we're going to talk about like what a cafe manager does because i feel like what happens in our industry you kind of fail up into the position of a cafe manager a lot of the time yep And so um, people end up in the position of a cafe manager relatively unqualified and unprepared for the responsibilities ahead of them. Mm -hmm. So could you tell me what a cafe manager is supposed to do and what it was like for you coming into into that world? Yeah, that's... (laughs) I, when you bring that up, I just have so many flashbacks and so many <laughs> scenarios. And I'm like, wow, like that happened. Um, and that's kind of the life of a cafe manager. And to be honest, like yeah. people ask me like, why are you still a cafe manager when 
you own a roasting company and there's a strategic reason for that. Like, I don't know about all the cafe owners, but I'm like not bold enough to own a cafe. Like, and to a degree, you know, we've talked about the reasons, right? Like, and at the same time, like I, I value things such as like patience and working on a project and making sure that the longevity of the project happens rather than like instant success. So I'm in no rush to do anything like own a cafe. Maybe I never will. Right now I own a roasting company, but within management, the funny thing is um, my first coffee job, it wasn't technically your, you know, classic third wave cafe. They serve specialty coffee, but maybe closer leaning towards like a um, second wave model. And I applied for the job and they looked at my resume and they were like, you know, we actually think you should be our manager. And I'm like, are you sure? I've never pulled a shot of espresso. Actually, (laughs) like, I have no idea. Like, I love pour overs at home, but that's about it. Um, But they believed in me when I came to, I had some previous experience in leading teams Mm -hmm. and that's what stuck out. So that was my initial like introduction to coffee was as a manager. And now this is the fourth cafe that I've managed and managing right now. And I think one of the key things that I would sum it up, two major things that a cafe manager does, they should be able to understand and represent a cafe or a business and represent their values and vision. Um, That's like the core. That's kind of the big picture, maybe a little more philosophical. And then to break it down to another step on a very practical level, like cafe managers role, a big part would be like to create efficiency for the business in order for the business to be sustainable. But those are two, I think, things that I separate. But then at the end of the day, we all know the day-to-day looks like there's an owner and there's uh, a team and staff and you play the role of the middle The middle man. Yeah. So there's a lot within that. And I, the more I thought about the, this concept of like a cafe manager, it's really hard to break it down. I mean, honestly, was it yesterday? This, no, last morning, yesterday morning, I, out of the blue, had to come in at like 6 a.m. and work on a freaking toilet. Like, and Mm. I mean, we can unpack more of those kind of things, but sometimes you just have to like step in and do the dirty work in that sense. But that's not necessarily your role. See what I mean? Like, yes, Mm. but no. So is your role in your mind as a as a mm-hmm. cafe manager and has your experience been that you're a fixer or you're a leader or both? Okay. I mean, I think that ties to a bigger question and that's how manage I believe like management has changed over the course of years. Um I I don't think the role of a manager is just to be a fixer. Yet, I do think a manager has to be able to problem solve on the spot, which sometimes it's fixing stuff, right? I mean, whether that's unplugging a toilet or trying to figure out conflict within a team, sometimes it has to happen on the spot and you have to have that ability to problem solve. Um, So it's not necessarily, I don't think managers should be viewed that. I don't view myself as a manager, as like a problem fixer. I'm not running around with a fire extinguisher. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm actually setting up barriers so no fires start um i think that's a better way to look at it and then at the end of the day it's management is that's actually a pretty poor word like in 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 scope of like what i do day to day um it is more leadership it's like that's what i mean by like representing a cafe or a business according to their values it's like and knowing the team one but also embodying the values of a business and being able to live that out daily within your team and then use different maybe like practices like different systems in place to execute on those values and execute for the you know the vision so it's definitely leadership but Mm -hmm. don't toss the baby out with the bathwater and say well i'm a manager i shouldn't be like unplugging toilets you know what i mean like i just saved the company a decent amount of money by not just straight going to a plumber and calling a plumber to put a snake down a pipe you know what i mean yeah so i want to kind of extrapolate on that a little bit further when it comes to the vibe of the place mm-hmm. i often believe that 
whether it's in a cafe or it's in an organization or a small business, whatever kind of a business it is, the leader contributes to the vibe of the workplace. Mm -hmm. For sure. Who do you think or what role does a cafe manager play in setting the vibe and and for for example we walk into some cafes as as employees and it's just utter fucking chaos yeah and then sometimes we walk in there and everybody works in silence it's super ordered but everybody's still also scared to step out of place because yeah. So both of those are extremely toxic environments, right? Yeah, for sure. So where – and we'll talk about this quite a lot in the next episode because I, I feel that the role of the manager has shifted to what it used to be. Yep. But what role does the manager play in determining the vibe of the yeah. workplace? Okay, I mean vibe or culture, right? Or Both. are those interchangeable? Yeah, they're, like, they're you, interchangeable. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, yep. so great, great spot there. Yeah, I, I think two things can happen. Um, if there's a strong manager, a strong leader within a company, um, two potentials. If the business has an established culture and the manager and the leader sees that, and again, like accepts that. And like one of the, one of the main things as a manager, I have to ask myself, like, do I believe in like for me right now as a manager at Narrative Coffee, do I believe that narratives values? Like, mm. do I believe hospitality is paramount? Like, do I really believe that? Like, do I want to execute that outside of narrative? Like, those are my big questions for myself. And like, I I do believe that. You know what I mean? So, uh, my boss. Maxwell, he doesn't mm -hmm. need to tell me to make sure that hospitality is paramount. He doesn't. Why? Because I would live that out whether I worked for a narrative or not. So if I embody those values, then the vibe that I'm going to uh, set for the team is going to come out of who I am and not necessarily the checkpoint of saying like, hey, we need to make sure that we do great hospitality. Like, that doesn't make sense, right? But then the other thing is if a business doesn't have established values, doesn't mm -hmm. have an established culture, a person like myself can actually be pretty toxic for that business mm -hmm. because I'm going to establish the culture that I believe in according to my values. Mm. And it does two things. It could potentially create a bubble culture within a company mm -hmm. and then that bubble grows and it looks like the company grows, but then if I leave, the bubble explodes yeah. and there's chaos or the bubble grows so big that I end up taking over the company and yep. both can be toxic or in most yeah. parts, both shouldn't happen. Yeah, I can speak to that. I was fired from two different places because the ownership of both of those places refused to set a vibe or a culture for mm -hmm. those workplaces and so I kind of instilled uh, a sense of the way that we were going to run things as yeah. the person who was the head barista and both of those times I I was fired because the owners felt that the customers were coming in and thinking it was my business yeah and I mean one of them literally said to me my I'm sorry Lee my ego can't take it you've taken sales through the roof but my ego can't take it no you have to mm -hmm. You have to leave. It's yeah. kind of a compliment, right? Like yeah. it, it showed me that I can build a business and, and take a coffee business where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. But you're exactly right. It does end up being toxic because if the owner of the business is not on board with what you're trying to create, it's dysfunctional. Yeah. And it's it'll, not it'll quick. Yeah, it'll, it'll quickly create a separation and disunity with, within a team because – no matter what and who you are as a leader, you're going to have a squad, but you're also going to have some folks, no matter how great you are, no one's going to align with everyone hundred no. percent. So it's going to create a separation within the team, no matter what. But like I said, the problem becomes when that one of the separations becomes the bubble and then everyone is either afraid to pop it or there's that weird tension. Like we all have, 
been in cafes or worked in cafes with weird tension that, yeah. you know, there's like relational stuff going on. Yeah. Like they may be cranking out tasty espressos, but what is going on behind the bar? But it's toxic like, as fuck behind the bar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this is this really lends itself to when people say to me, yeah, yeah, but is it really important to set a value statement and understand what your mission and vision is for the business? This is why as an mm-hmm. owner of a business, you set the culture by de- clearly defining the values and the mission and the vision of the business because you then are responsible to pass that on to the person who is your cafe manager so that they can make sure they keep reiterating it to the team, bring it back to the values, bring it back to the mission of what we're trying to achieve, what's our long-term vision. It just becomes a tool that everybody knows is the compass for the way that they conduct themselves. Otherwise, it it all just goes awry. Yeah. And and I think for me in the past, uh, I've worked with owners who have defined a culture but Mm -hmm. were absent which didn't help me like no. to continue working on that. Then there were owners who didn't define the culture or the value system and were present. And at the same time have said things to me like, Oh, you can do whatever you want. Yo, I, I trust you. Yeah. <laughs> You're good. And I'm like, what the hell does that I'm mean? Super chill, man. Like, uh, let's just keep it chill. Let's just keep it chill. No, that's also toxic. Yeah. Exactly. And I'm like, well, I want to execute on these things, but I really don't know what my parameters are. Like, mm. g- give me a frame of reference. Cause for me, like I want to honor the owner. I, there's so much value in a founder who had an idea, had a vision, they were willing to risk it and step forward and to start this business. Like that's another reason why I'm still a manager, even though I own a company is because mm-hmm. I, I love the fact that like, I, I see what you're doing there. I resonate with that. What can I do to help you? And of course I get paid, I still make a living, but I'm there from the perspective, like I resonate with that vision. I resonate with that already set culture and I want to invest into that. And that, that requires strong ownership and strong leadership, even outside of management. I tell cafe owners all the time, when you're looking to fill your cafe manager position, look for people who have owned businesses before. Mm, That's good. It, they may not have, like, don't find people who didn't understand what they were doing, but at the very least, somebody who has owned a business before that is looking for a leadership role in a cafe can at least have some empathy for what it's like to risk everything to be an owner mm-hmm. and they know what's at stake. They understand the anxiety that's involved in that, but they're also clear on what it is to be an employee. So the manager yeah. needs to be able to empathize with both sides and all the best cafe managers have always been people who've owned their own businesses or yeah. do still own their own businesses. Yeah. And I think to a degree, going back to what you said earlier, I think sometimes it could potentially be beneficial to like hire from within. Mm. And especially if an employee who has displayed like leadership and humility and just hard work, like the classic traits that you want and someone just to be part of the team. And sometimes those folks just need to be encouraged and elevated a little bit to step up and then they flourish. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I don't think that happens a lot. I think a lot of the times it's like what you were saying, it's like, a manager gets upset, quits, and then whoever was there the longest is like, oh, me? Like, well, what do I do? And there's no, like, there's no mentorship. There's no, no support. There's no championing someone else into this new position. It's like, oh, go get them. Yeah, you good got luck. It. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. So in the next episode, we're going to take this idea further. And I, I'd love to kind of discuss what the – the manager of today, what that's evolved into because as all the stuff we were talking about happens, um, the role of the manager shifts because, you know, now we've got unionizations of different workforces. Now we've got the pay structure being under scrutiny, which it should have been a long time ago, but now we've got topics like diversity, participating, in the conversation of why people want to take jobs. So let's explore that in the next episode. Okay, cool. Peace, love and peanut butter, everybody. Have an amazing rest of your day. 
Thanks friends. If you enjoyed this video, here's what you should check out next. Consider supporting Mapper Forward on Patreon and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell before you leave.